Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, massive Continental Motors overhaul, single blade drone rotor patented by Amazon, photos reveal new equipment on SpaceX drone ship. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's March 27th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Continental Motors seems to have a lot of faith in the future of aviation, enough so to invest tens of millions of dollars in a new plant, and millions more on the latest new manufacturing technologies. The company has just announced their intention to build a new factory and corporate office in Mobile, Alabama, and invest globally in the future of general aviation. In the first step of a three-year global investment plan to take its manufacturing, customer service, and engineering infrastructure to the next level, they will build a new state-of-the-art manufacturing facility and corporate office located at the Mobile Aeroplex at Brooklyn, replacing the company's current 11 building footprints with a single state-of-the-art facility designed for lean manufacturing and office systems. The new facility will be nearly 225,000 square feet, mostly dedicated to advanced engine and parts manufacturing. The facility will be populated with new manufacturing equipment and include a special area designated for evaluation of new manufacturing techniques and processes, including additive manufacturing and automation. CMG will also build a new customer and technical service infrastructure and environment that will allow Continental Motors to assist its customers through phone, email, and app support, regardless of their location in the world, 24-7, 365 days. Continental Motors will finish building design and equipment selection in 2017 and will move into its new North American facility in 2019. The latest innovation to come out of Amazon's Prime Air Delivery Program is a single-blade rotor for delivery drones, for which the company has received a patent. According to the patent document, the single-blade rotors will require less energy to turn and could also save power by shutting down during cruise. The patent document describes a VTOL drone with a single-blade rotors on a fixed wing or rotary wing aircraft. Once established in forward flight, the first propulsion system driving the single-blade propellers may be disengaged, the document states. Upon disengaging the first propulsion system, the single-blade propellers may stop spinning and weather vane or self-align such that the aerodynamic blade is oriented opposite the direction of travel. The rotors could be re-engaged at any time in the flight to transition to landing, to assist in a climb, to provide redundancy in a descent, to provide backup lift in the case of an emergency or in any other situation requiring an increased lift capability. Of course, a patent does not make a product and the FAA has still not given authorization to drone deliveries. But when that time comes, it appears Amazon is setting on G and waiting on O. After the break, is there something new on the SpaceX drone ship? Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. During a helicopter tour of Florida Space Coast, self-proclaimed space fan Stefan Marr saw something interesting on the deck of SpaceX's drone recovery ship. So he started shooting photos with a telephoto lens. 
The images showed a new piece of equipment that is thought to be a robot that would interact with and secure Falcon 9 boosters after they land on the vessel. The device has been nicknamed Optimus Prime by Reddit's SpaceX community and would likely help further reduce the cost of reusing boosters by the company. SpaceX Senior Director of Launch Operations Ricky Lim confirmed to Florida Today that the device which is still being tested is a future capability that will be introduced when it passes its testing regime. I don't think it's very far away, Lim said, but he would not elaborate on its specific use. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. It's an amazing, if pivotal, test. Can you stop a massive airliner like a Boeing 747-8 by rejecting a takeoff with enough braking action to keep it on the runway? Check it out for yourself. Search Boeing 747-8 performs ultimate rejected takeoff on YouTube. After these messages, Boeing seeks Pennsylvania Grant. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Boeing has applied for a $30 million state redevelopment grant from the state of Pennsylvania to convert a vacant industrial building at its Ridley Park campus into an aircraft modification facility. The total cost of the project is estimated at $64 million. When the crew of aircraft carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower saw the ship's first commanding officer, Captain William Ramsey, make the first launch off the flight deck on September 15th, 1977, few probably thought the 17th commanding officer would one day probably announce the ship's 300,000th successful arresting landing. On March 19th, commanding officer Captain Paul Spadaro Jr. got to make that announcement. Rocket Lab has announced a Series D financing round of $75 million. The round was led by Data Collective with additional investment from Promise Ventures and an undisclosed investor and with renewed participation with Bessemer Ventures Partners, Coastal Ventures, and K1W1. The closure of the round brings the total funding of Rocket Lab has received to date to $148 million. Duncan Aviation's Lincoln, Nebraska facility was recently approved by Aruba's Department of Civil Aviation as an approved aircraft maintenance organization. In addition to the FAA and this new Aruba certification, Duncan Aviation's location in Lincoln, Battle Creek, Michigan, Houston, Texas, and Provo, Utah holds certificates for 10 additional civil aviation authorities around the world. There's a new small drone on the market that its maker is calling the ultimate selfie drone. The Explorer Mini drone has been introduced to UAV hobbyists in the North American market. The little drone features customized body covers, intelligent flight control, multi-flight control modes, and custom Xero Explorer app. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Boom Supersonic has completed a $33 million Series A round of fundraising, which should be adequate to build and fly its first XB-1 demonstration aircraft, according to the company. Boom founder and CEO Blake Scholl said in an interview that the company now has all the pieces we need, technology, suppliers, and capital to go out and make some history and set some speed records. Scholl said that the company has completed almost all of the engineering for the aircraft. 
and the first wing components are arriving at the company's headquarters soon. Next will be structural tests. We're probably about a year away from flight, he said, and that the funding will be used primarily to fund the existing team, as well as acquiring new talent. He said Boom Supersonic will be announcing new customers later this year, and they will become strategic funding partners in future fundraising rounds. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.